morning. Today, I will continue our conversation with about uh, strategies for financial freedom. And I will start by asking you the following financial questions. What is the best way to achieve financial freedom while at the same time providing financial protection to your surviving dependents? It's an important question, right? I know, and it's part of what you need to consider when you're doing your overall financial plan. Is life insurance part of your portfolio? Do you even need life insurance? If so, what kind of life insurance? Welcome to the Financial Legacy Podcast. I am your host, Maria Ellis. On every episode, I will bring you my perspective and the perspective of my guests on financial planning and financial legacy topics. Here on the Financial Legacy Podcast, we're changing lives one person at a time by creating your own financial plan and financial legacy to help you create and enjoy your financial success. Connect with us at financiallegacy.life for your complimentary consultation. In my book, Achieve Financial Freedom, a roadmap to financial success, I taught you about investment strategies and share with you ideas to provide you with answers to some of your important questions. One of the most important steps on the road to financial freedom is to create an investment strategy to your own financial objectives based on your own financial objectives. For instance, do you need to give financial protection to survive independence? If so, what type of insurance do you need? What kind of financial protection are you looking for? Well, there are basically two types of life insurance policy. There is the whole life and term policy. While the whole life policy is more costly than the term life coverage, uh, whether term or life, the payout of the beneficiary that the beneficiary receives uh, is, is tax free. Whole life insurance is a life insurance policy which is guaranteed to remain in force for the insured's life, entire lifetime. So provided, of course, that payments, the premium payments are, are made, right, on a timely basis. So one of the reasons why I like whole life insurance is because the cash, cash value um, is one of the key living benefits of whole life insurance. A portion of every premium that you make is added to your policy cash value. So it's almost like a forcing savings mechanism, right? You make your monthly premiums, part of that goes to the cost of the insurance and the other goes to actually accumulating cash. So that money becomes, you could have access to that money. That money grows over time. Uh, the money is guaranteed. Uh, you know, this is a policy, it's a whole life policy. So the money is guaranteed. Um, it never goes down. And it can become an important and stable uh, part of your financial plan. There are monies that you could use for emergency purposes. You know, for instance, as you accumulate all that cash, you could use that money for emergency purposes. Uh, a story that come to mind, and I, I was I was amazed when I first heard that, was that um, Mr. Walt Disney, uh, he borrowed money against his life insurance policy so that he could develop his idea to the point where he could show others what, ki what kinds of plan he had in mind. You know, what was his idea about creating Disneyland project? So... Interestingly enough, uh, while Disney's employees worked on the Disneyland project uh, with the funds that came from life insurance cash value. So I found that was a very interesting uh, observation in terms of how to use proceeds from a whole life insurance policy. So what are some of the other benefits of whole life? Um, 
in addition to this guarantee cash value growth that I was talking about, many life insurance companies also pay dividends, right? So while you can take these dividends as cash, you could also use them to pay a, a portion or you, or to even pay your whole premium, depending on you know how large the cash dividend is. Many people invest, reinvest um, that those dividends into their policies. Uh, that allows your cash value to relate even faster, right? So, so that's again an advantage. So you can renew your term policy uh, when it expires, but the premiums will be higher. So you can convert your term policy to a whole life policy if you wish. Term is a great option. Term policy is a great option when you have kids, for instance, or while you are paying a mortgage. Uh, you could also customize a whole life insurance policy with riders dependent on your overall insurance needs. Riders, so what kind of riders are we talking about? Such riders can include term conversion, disability income, long-term care, critical illness, waiver of premiums, uh, or even unemployment protection. For instance, uh, for an additional charge, you can customize your whole life insurance to include long-term care rider. In, as an example, in my own financial plan, I have life insurance with a rider with long-term care benefits. So life insurance is a very personal, you know, investment uh, depending on your overall financial goals. So depending on your age, depending on your financial goals, you could decide amongst the various you know, versions of life insurance. Usually term life insurance is available for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, or even 30 year terms. And um, the key step in buying insurance protection is selecting your beneficiary, right? So that's very important. Your beneficiary can be a person, for instance, your husband or your wife, or it could be more than two people, such as your children, as an example. If you, let's say you have three children or, you know, so you could divide them um, however you like it in terms of percentages, depending on when your overall children's needs are, you could make that decision as to what percentage of the life proceeds each of the child will get. So to give you an example of term insurance, uh, in my case, again, my husband and I invested in term insurance when we first purchase our home, your very first home, actually. Um, we have saved money for down payment, and then we both were working, and so we decided to finance the home to get a mortgage, which was at the time about 75% of the purchase price. So we decided to buy term insurance to enable um, our kids to pay off the mortgage in the event that, you know, either my husband or and I could have an early and unexpected demise, right? If we were to pass on. So, you know, this, this, as you could see, these are uses that, um, that are available for, for life insurance. Your beneficiaries, by designating your beneficiaries, you have the final word over who receives your death benefits. Therefore, as your life changes, it's important to review your life insurance policies to make sure that you still have the right beneficiary designations in your insurance policies. So, so what happens sometimes with some of my clients is that they will be buying an insurance policy and they hold it for many years because this, this is a long-term investment, right? And then maybe they, you know, one of their children pass away or maybe they get divorced and get remarried. And so whenever there is a life change, uh, you need to make sure that your policy is reviewed so that you could have the right beneficiaries um, that in your policy. So uh, what are some of the questions that you will need to consider? 
uh, when when you are trying to decide whether or not life insurance policy is something that you want or need. So some of the questions will be, for instance, who will require additional cash when you pass on? Like, do you have young children or do you have children that are going to college, as an example? Who will require additional cash uh, for any particular illness um, or a disability? Uh, you may have a child who is disabled. Um, who in your family uh, will bear cost of your passing? Who receives the funds if none of your beneficiaries survive you? Should the funds pass on to your estate or to your trust? So those are some of the important questions. I'm sure you will have others as well, but I'm trying to give you a flavor for, you know, what kinds of questions you could start thinking about in terms of when you're selecting the beneficiary, because that's very important, right? That's a critical part of that decision making. So you don't need to figure it all out right now by yourself. Uh, if you, some of us have a lot of clarity as to how we want to proceed, but if you're not quite clear, contact your fiduciary advisor and examine your own specific insurance needs and requirements. So another um, insurance uh, that I would like to talk to you about is uh, universal life insurance. So the major advantages of the universal life policy is the flexibility regarding frequency of payments and the flexible death benefits, right? Universal life insurance proceeds are, are there, it, it provides permanent protection with no need to renew the policy with higher premiums. And at the death, um, uh, the benefits, of course, to your beneficiaries are also tax-free. With some of the universal insurance policies, you can also build cash value and have access to cash while you're still alive a special blend of universal life insurance and, and long-term care insurance coverage can provide you with death benefits to your beneficiaries as well as with cash value to help you with long-term care custodial expenses. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of life insurance? The advantages of life insurance are greater, I think, than the disadvantages. For instance, life insurance can be used for many functions in state planning, including the following. Term or whole life insurance can be purchased to provide funds for your surviving spouse or children when death occurs. Whole life insurance can be purchased to provide income to the parents at retirement right? Because you're going to have some cash value there. These can occur by converting the policy to an annuity or by withdrawing the cash value. So depending on how you want to go about it, you could withdraw the cash at that point in time. Or some of my clients, what they do is they just create an annuity and then they receive monthly checks. So it depends on your lifestyle and, and how you like to proceed. Life insurance can provide dollars that can be passed as an inheritance. Life insurance can be used to provide funds for payment of state taxes, as an example, right? Or state um, settlement costs that you may have or, or any debt obligations that you have. You don't want to pass on and, and leave debts that your kids will have to now um, make good on so if you has any if you have any debts that's certainly a good reason to have life insurance so that the proceeds will go to pay any debts that you may have life insurance can provide income at the time of your parents death for instance for the you know buy out of a family business so if you have a family business um, you know, it will be important to have life insurance so that you could provide funds to buy now to the, the partner um, who basically pass on 
so this enables a living partner to keep the business intact. Life insurance can be used to create or enhance your estate. It can be a state building plan providing money to your heirs. There are some life insurance policies that enable you to draw on death benefits to cover long-term care costs. And I think we mentioned that earlier as well. So in summary, life insurance plays an important role in your estate planning. Depending on your overall financial needs, you can determine if you need life insurance or not. If you have dependents, Will term insurance, whole life insurance, or viable insurance be the best for your needs? That's a question, right? That's something that you need to discuss with your advisor so that you can learn all the uh, advantages and disadvantages and be able to compare the various kinds of life insurance. So although it seems like you need to choose between whole life and other kinds of life insurance, the truth is that most of my clients secure financial plans, typically with a mix of different kinds of insurance depending on uh, their life situation or their life, their needs. So this can give you more flexibility to prepare you for any uh, of life's many possibilities, right? Whether it is to pay off debt or whether it is to leave a legacy. Um, so depending on what your overall needs are, again, you will have a, an opportunity to review with your financial advisor as to what would be the best options for you or the mix of options for you. So in closing, my advice is to work with your fiduciary advisor to evaluate your uh, life insurance needs because your family, your estate, and your business needs change throughout your lifetime, right? We, I mean, one thing that we can count on is changing life, right? So it's important to, again, review once you have acquired your life insurance, to review your life insurance um, beneficiaries on a, uh, I'll suggest annually um, to make sure that, you know, that's part of your overall uh, financial review at the end of every year. So in closing, I would like to thank you for tuning into the Financial Legacy Podcast. Here with me, Maria Ellis. To learn more about how to work with me, go to financiallegacy.life. Here, the Financial Legacy Podcast, we're changing lives one person at a time to help you create and enjoy your financial success. Connect with us at financiallegacy.life for your complimentary consultation. Thank you. Namaste. In providing answers, neither Maria Ellis nor the Financial Legacy Podcast and guest speakers are acting as certified financial planners, advisors, certified financial analysts, CPAs, economists, accountants, or lawyers. Neither Maria Ellis or the Financial Legacy Podcast and guest speakers make any recommendations as to any specific securities or investments. All content is for informational and general purposes only and does not constitute as financial or legal advice. You should consult your own tax, legal, and financial advisors regarding your particular situation. Neither Maria Ellis nor Financial Legacy Podcast and guest speakers accept any responsibility for any loss that may arise from accessing or reliance from any information in this podcast. And to the extent permitted by law, we exclude all liabilities for any loss or damages derived directly or indirectly arising from the use of the information.